Hello, and welcome back to the Kitchen Table Modelers Workshop. My name's Ian, this is my kitchen table where I do all my modeling. So if you look over my shoulder here, you can see what we've got in store for you today. It's a couple of kits from Great Walls Hobby, and preliminary, it is the amazing Focke Wolf 189A1 and A2 kits. Now, this is a kit I've been at for quite a while. It's not a new kit by any stretch of the imagination, but it's certainly definitely a modern tooling. Um, and I found these couple on eBay, that's where I usually get a lot of my kits. I got them for a good price. Um, and I'm very interested, certainly, in, in the, the snow ski version. So that's the version we're going to look at the most, but we can see the differences between the two kits. Um, so we're going to go through the, the sprues, we'll have a look at the details, have a look at the instructions, just the usual format, and I'll give you my thoughts on how I think it's uh, moulded and how I think it may go together. Um, and then we'll sum it all up at the end, as per usual. So, enough waffling by me, let's get the camera down onto the table, let's go have a look in the box and see what we've got. So here we are on the table, and first of all, um, as I always do with my box in, in box reviews, I always make comment about the box art, and Great Wall Hobby have absolutely knocked it out of the park with this box art. It is a fantastic action photograph of this aircraft right in the the theatre of operation that it was in in the Russian front in the middle of winter, skidding down the runway or taxiing with the skis. It's iconic. It's, it really, to my mind, captures the essence of this aircraft as it ought to be captured in the field. Um, if we look at the that's the boxing for the A1. If you look at the Focke Wolf 189A2 version, again in flight, iconic photograph, clouds, aircraft, banking to make a turn, just beautiful box art. Um, top marks for Great Wall Hobby for this. So, what have we got here? So, it's kit number L4808 in 148 scale. Uh, World War II German Focke Wolf FW 189A1 with Sonder Kitten, I presume that's how it's pronounced, uh, Schnefkuffen. Now, I'm assuming that's snow skis in German. I apologize if I've um, made a mispronunciation. German definitely isn't my first language or even my second. And I apologize for that. So, what have we got here? So, full clear cockpit. Accurate detail of wing surfaces, accurate cockpit with full interior details, accurate engine details with cockpit pipelines, uh, main gear skis with full structures, uh, with tail ski, and then there's a bit of Chinese that obviously I can't read. So if we look on the side here, then we've got some CAD images of the aircraft for 14 years and over, so it's not for children. We've got the pieces that are the skis, now I'm assuming that will be the difference between this kit and the A2 version, which will have normal wheeled undercarriages. We've got a piece of photo etch, which is probably the flaps and the HT circuits for the engines and maybe a couple of other bits, harnesses such like. We've got the uh, decals, which looks like we've got um, pre-cut masks for the glazing, which will be excellent. Uh, we look on the end, so it's just a same a resume of what was on the front, uh, 148 scale L4808, and then on the on the rear or side of it, we've got a little bit of information about the aircraft. I don't know if I can get that to focus. Can I get it yet? Yeah. So if you want to pause that, you can read at your leisure. Um, adjust the light because it's got a bit of a glare going on it there. There we go, it's a bit better. And then we've got a couple of side profiles of the splinter camouflage with the probably the RLM65 and the yellow tips under the wings and then the blacked out swash stickers for the tails and that is the final end. So let's get the box open. You'll have to excuse me a minute because the kitchen window's open and it's blowing an absolute gear for me. So we'll just close that before we end up in trouble. So if we lift the lid off the box, and first thing we see is the colour callout sheet for this model. There's only one colour callout, so that will make painting easy. We've got a bit of a brochure for other kits that Great Wall Hobbies do. Uh, we've got the instructions, full colour instructions. 
A box full of plastic. And then at the bottom of the box, we have got in a nice plastic sleeve, which, yeah, this is a great wool hobby on the back. So this is obviously good promotion material, but we have got a print of the box art, which is absolutely stunning. Um, if every model manufacturer did this for their kits, we'd all be very happy modelers. Uh, this is a the print is of good enough quality that let me get it back in the sleeve. You could hang this on your model room or anywhere in the house, and you'd be very happy to do that. So that is a huge bonus, and especially considering okay, I bought this kit second hand. Um, great surprise to me, but yeah, just what a bonus package to the kit. So anyway, let's have a quick look at the painting callouts. Um, so the colours they're calling for is uh, Mr. Hobby colour, um, but it also gives you the RLM numbers. So RLM 71, tyre black, RLM 70, RLM 66, RLM 04, yellow, red clear, uh, light blue, RLM 65, clear green, red and steel black. So that's colours that you can get from so many different man manufacturers paint ranges it shouldn't be a problem getting the colors for this kit right so we've got possibly just a repeat of the let's try and get that so it doesn't glare oh, are we going to get the glare off this i don't know if we are there we go so we've got a repeat of the information that's on the box, get that in focus. If you want to stop and pause that, you can read it. So let's open up on the inside. So the usual, come on, focus. There we go. So we've got the usual parts layout, uh, the colors again, and then we go into construction. So cockpit floor, Part of the interior, possibly a camera for uh, for um, photo reconnaissance. Control yoke. We've got the seat with harnesses, the photo edge harnesses. We have the pilot seat with photo harnesses going down. We've got the foot controls, and then we've got the cockpit side wall. So it looks quite simple. And move on to the other side wall and then join in the two cockpit halves together and you can see immediately when you join the two cockpit halves together and lay it on the bottom, the lower wing surface how much glazing is going to be in this cockpit because that is all glazing um, where the gaps in the cockpit is um, there's obviously a bit of a replacement part to put on the lower wing before you join the cockpit to it and then we move on to the rear machine gun uh, no, sorry, this will be the forward machine gun, possibly, is it? No, rear upper machine gun, and then the rear lower machine gun. Uh, so then there's the glazing going in. We have another part there, which I'm not quite sure what it is, but it may be another machine gun. Then we've got the front cockpit, which the glazing appears to be a single piece, which will be fantastic if that's the case. Uh, we've got radios and the main instrument panel. Uh, front glazing going on, rear glazing going on. And then up a machine gun with the PE, which you'll probably leave to the last to make sure it doesn't get knocked off during painting and weathering. Um, and then the rest of the glazing panels in this next two sections to seal up the whole cockpit assembly. Then moving on to the air brake, as they're saying, and you've got the option of opened or closed. And if it's open, I should imagine the PE photo edge part will go on the inside of it. An antenna and a rear and the access ladder again they'll only go on when you finish to save them being knocked off or broken during construction and then we're moving on to the engine um, two halves with the inlet and exhaust the engine bearers and then you've got the HT um, ignition circuit cable and for the photo etch um, propeller two bladed propeller with the spinner and the rear part of the cone and then moving on to the, let's say, an assembly of less fuselage, but it's left fuselage and wing. That goes together. Now, a bit of test fitting, I think, 
may be required. I can see how they want to put it together. Um, but I'm, I'm, until I get around to building it, I'm not actually sure how effective this method of construction is going to be because it would appear you've only got one half of the tail boom here. You've got all the control surfaces, so ailerons and the same air brakes or flaps open or closed, and it is mentioning the foot wedge part that's to go in. It looks like the foot wedge part actually goes onto the, the wing surface and then there's already detail on the, the flap, so we'll have to check that when we look through the parts. Okay, so you've assembled the whole outer wing and the outer side of the tail boom, and then you're joining the inner side to the pre-assembled parts with the tail fin, now, the, the, the rudder. Now, I don't know how easy that's going to be, and I suppose it'll only be when I come to build it, I can figure out if that's going to work okay or whether or not we actually need to build up the tail boom, join it, and do all the seam work before we construct the outer wing and, and connect it to the upper wing surface. So that's, it's yeah, um, I don't know. That's one of these things we're just going to have to give it a go and see. Moving on then, we've got the engine cowls. Now, I think they can be positioned either open or closed if you want to show off the engine detail. We've got the front panel and then putting the propeller on, and then it's a repeat of the same construction parts for the right hand um, boom and engine assembly. Left and right hand parts then, oh no we're moving sorry, onto the skis. So you've got, that's the, the rear um, horizontal surface and elevator and then the, the, the rear ski um, and then these are obviously the main undercarriage skis and you're making two parts so they're identical for either side. And then you've got the left side and the right side joining the center section for the fuselage. And I can imagine there's going to be a bit of test fitting and some very, very careful gluing to get this all together. Um, skis go in, a few bits and pieces of ancillary parts, like wing root covers, photo wedge fasteners, um, pitot tube will probably be left to the last. And then you get the access ladder for it all. So, yeah, interesting stuff. And then a plan on the back for how and where to place all the pre-cut masks. Wow. Not too many steps, but I think it's going to be a reasonably involved build. So let's actually get the parts. I'll just set the box up here and we can get the parts one by one and have a look at them. So first off, we get a bag with the skis. Now, crinkly bags, but they look like they are nice resealable bags. So, first thoughts here. Well, really nice, solid, crisp plastic. Very reminiscent of Hasegawa plastic. If we can get a focus on here and get the light to work in our favor, we can see the detail is fantastic. We've got very sharp, crisply molded panel lines. We've got very detailed rivets and the detail under your finger feels very, very sharp and crisp. We've got the rear, um, rear skid and parts of the bracing for it all. Yeah, beautiful. There is quite sizable ejector pins, but you're not going to see any of it. Also, we've got some beautifully big locating marks, uh, locating holes, pins and holes, so it should be a good, easy, simple fit. And if we look on the upper housing of the skis, we've actually got um, a raised spine around the part that locates into a recess, like a, a, a tongue and groove type assembly. So if that all is aligned up properly, then there should be no problems with alignment and a very, very strong um, firm join. So yeah, well done there. That looks fantastic. Next through to come out is the engines and it's a double again. So I'll just take one out. I'm really liking these um, resealable bags. It means we can look at it and put it back and you keep it all in the right place. So um, again, beautifully, beautifully crisp molding now. See if I can get that caught in the reflection, but 
Can we see the tread plate detail for the stairs, the access ladders? Absolutely fantastic. And let's see if we can get in focus, but can we see the detail on the engines? You can actually see the cooling fins on each individual cylinder. You can see all the nuts, bolts, fasteners, and detail in that engine, and it looks absolutely stunning. As with the engine bearers, again, totally in scale, beautiful molding. There's no flash on any of these parts. The sprue gates are really, really nice and thin. So it's going to be easy with a nice sharp pair of side cutters to cut all the parts off and clean them up. We have the rib detail on the reverse of the um, flaps or air brakes as they call them. And no ejector pin marks, so nothing to clean up. Just a little clean up of the sprue gates and you're ready to paint. So well done there, that's top marks. And then if we look at the, the smaller uh, rod-like assemblies, they're absolutely beautifully molded and I can't even see uh, a parting line. There's a well, maybe just a very fine parted line. I don't even know if I can get the camera to focus on it around the, the, the tubular parts. So yeah, absolutely stunning molding. Propeller blade, beautifully crisply molded. No flash whatsoever, so well, it's got to be nearly a 10 out of 10 for those parts. Next sprue, right, there we go. We have a piece running around loose in the bag. Don't know which part that is. Possibly a radio. It doesn't look to be too badly damaged, but you've got to be mindful not to lose it. So let's have a look at this sprue. So we do have a figure. Kind of looks like he's in pain the way the angle of him is, but I'm assuming that's him going to board the aircraft. So this is the reverse side. So we do have some ejector pin marks in the side detail of the fillets that go in at the wing roots on the inside. And there are some ejector pins on the inside of the cockpit. Now, to be fair, if we look at the outside of the cockpit, it's absolutely stunning, stunning detail. And it's quite a complex shape, so I, yeah, I can see why they've had to put ejector pins in the part to get it out of the mold. There's no flash on any of this. The connection part, uh, the sprue gates are very, very fine, so they're going to be easy to clean up. And these parts will only take a small, like a scrape with a rounded scalpel and a fine sand and stick, and they'll be gone. They're not overly intrusive. And the chance of you actually seeing them is probably reasonably slim. These ones here are a bit bigger, but they're more accessible to get cleaned away. So a little bit of cleanup work and you'll be okay. If we look on the cockpit floor, no ejector pin marks. They're on the reverse. Details, beautiful and crisp. Really, really nice. The ribbing detail on the uh, control surfaces are absolutely stunning. Really, really nice. So that'll take a little bit of wash and a dry brush beautifully. Um, so this is possibly the elevator. This is the rear horizontal stabilizer. Again, beautifully crisp panel lines. They're all reasonably even. They're slightly, slightly different on the back here as they are to the side of the fuselage. But again, that it's marginal. If you wanted to extend them, one run with a Tamiya scribing tool and they will be exactly the same as the rest of it so that's not anything that i'm particularly worried about but just beautifully clear parts so we've got cockpit bits and pieces we've got arms for the fellow and his boots so they're all there um, and various you know foot pegs um, that looks like the front wing parts you see going in the front wing root parts going at the last step of assembly beautiful instrument panels catch that in there you can see all the detail that's there so if the decals are really good and they sit in there you're going to get beautiful beautiful cockpit right next sprue there's not just too many sprues there's only one after this or two if you include the glazing so this is the tail booms and this is when you actually get a, a good feeling of the size of this aircraft. It's not going to be a very small model, to be honest with you. Again, no flash whatsoever and stunning molding. Look at the rudder and all the detail of the internal structure of that rudder. Absolutely beautiful. We've got 
nicely evenly scribed panel lines along all sides of it and they're in keeping with what's on the rear horizontal stabiliser so actually I think you probably won't need to do anything other than just carefully join the parts and then clean them up and rescribe anywhere you lose when you sand. You've got the front engine cell there and there. Again, beautiful, beautiful parts. Uh, if we look on the inside of the engine cells, there are a couple of ejector pins that if you are going to have them open, you may need to deal with. I'm probably not going to have them open, so it's not going to bother me at all. Um, very fine on the inlet and exhaust manifolds. Minimal bearing. Beautiful, beautiful moulding. Um, yeah, I'm actually blown away by Great Wall Hobby. I've heard good things about them, but yeah, this completely um, solidifies them in my mind of how good the quality of the moulding is. So there's the entirety of the sprue that has got the fuselage house on. If I just move these out of the way, sorry, I'm trying to run out of space. So if we look at that, there we go. Stunning work. Right. Finally, we've got the sprue with the wings on. Again, self-sealing bag, so all this will go back into the bags. And be kept perfectly. Again, the detail is stunning. If we look, get that focused on there, look at the access hatches on the wings there you go you can see it's even got the hinge detail and the latch detail beautiful even perfectly scribed panel lines and rivet details on all the panels so it's going to take a wash beautifully and then if we look at the control surfaces again you've got that internal structure showing through stress skin surface so it's stunning if we look at the wing roots all the access hatches for above the engine and then these are obviously reinforcing strips for your crew access over the wings. They're stunningly beautiful and moulded. Absolutely blown away by the quality of the moulding in this model kit. One or two ejector pins in the wheel wells, but nothing that's going to be seen. Um, and nothing that you can't sort out. And there is a couple of ejector pins in the undersurface of the flaps. That, depending on how far you have them open, will depend on how much you see. You possibly would be able to get rid of that with a very, very gently with a, a scalpel blade scraping at them. But it just depends how much you want to show. I personally am not too worried about that because I've seen an awful lot worse from either other mainstream manufacturers, you know, Tamiya, for example, being one of them, um, or Airfix, or you know, some of the other manufacturers, they do leave ejector pins in the most awful places. So on the whole though, um, beautiful mouldings. If I can get that in focus, there you go. You can see it. Absolutely spot on moldings, and it's going to be a good sizable model again. Right, final sprue to look at, uh, nicely packaged in protective foam, is the clear part. And this is the one we all wonder about because there is so many clear parts, and it's a huge part of this model. It's what makes it as iconic as it is. Now, for a model piece that is as complex moulding as it is, I have to say they're beautiful. There's a little bit of distortion in the, in the glazing, but it's minimal. You can look through there, you can see there's a little bit of distortion, but actually the cockpit detail, when you put it close up, you're going to see everything. The framing is thick in scale and is going to be easy to get all the masks on. And if you do this properly, you're going to have a beautiful, beautiful model. A little bit of scratching on this piece here. I don't know if you can see that there on the top. It's nothing deadly, and we may be able to polish that out. But once you get this masked up and sprayed and then unmasked, it's going to be absolutely stunning. And I have to say I'm really, really impressed with the quality of the moulding in this plastic. So what else have we got in here? Right, we do have the pre-cut masks, and they appear to be vinyl masks, so that might make them a pretty bit easier to put on, a little bit easier to put on. And then on the other side, we have got the decals and the photo etch. Now, excuse me while I get a pair of scissors. I'll 
pop this out and have a look. I'll leave the masks in and we'll just get the... So we've got an instruction sheet here, so when you reveal the black, black cover of the mask, please touch the glue surface gently to de decrease the viscosity a little, which will help you in your working. Okay, so it's obviously got quite a strong adhesive on the back of the masks. Right, there's a protective cover of the decals. And if you can see that, there's such a minimal carrier film in it. So these no-step wing decals, the car, it's actually hollow on the inside. So we're not going to have to worry about silvering at all, which is fantastic. They look to be so, so thin. You have got individual decals for your instrument panels. And you've obviously got the three-part swash stickers, which is fine. Um, if I can catch it in the light, you may get to focus and catch it in the light. You may be able to see roughly where the carrier film is, if I can get it to focus, come on. There we go, you can just see very, very minimal carrier film. Everything appears to be in register and is clearly visible and should work perfectly. And then the photo etch is very thin, reasonably flexible. It's got protective film on both sides, which is good because it means you can peel off one side, cut the parts off and they'll be stuck to the other side so they won't go f flinging off. And there is some small, small stuff here. You've got a beautiful, if I get a bit of blue back in to that and get it in focus. There we go, part, right, we have part 10 here is the gun sight and it's so fine. Absolutely stunning. You've got the harnesses, you've got the wing side of the flap assembly for your inner detail, which is beautiful. It'll take a wash beautifully. You can feel the the, the surface detail underneath the cover. Um, so I think there'll be no problem with that. So, um, yeah, stunning stuff, I have to say. What I might do is see if I can get some uh, photo shots of each sprue and put it up at the end of the video so you can actually look through and see that for yourselves. But if we take a quick look at the A2 kit as opposed to the A1, if I can get the box lid off, there we go. So now the A2 kit is just the ordinary undercarriage kit. So I won't look through all the sprues, but what I will do is we'll have a quick look at the instructions. So it is the same slightly different in that you get the sprue on the instructions, they're not colour. Uh, you get the sprue maps on the front, you do get the photo etch parts and obviously the decals and you get um, canopy masks the same. It's a similar construction process. If we can get that to focus, there we go, similar construction process. So we go through making the cockpit up putting the cockpit sidewalls in, building it together. It looks to be very similar to the A1. Putting the front canopy together, gluing it all together, and then moving on to the engines. And the engines, the only difference here with this one is we've got the undercarriage to construct um, before we put, and drill out holes in the wing to attach bombs before we put the wing parts together. Moving on, that's we've got the bombs here to go on. These are all a similar construction method. Then we move on to this side. Now there is a correction sheet here. And if we look at this, then we can see they've missed putting on part B6 for the top wing surface. But again, others drilling out the lower wing and adding the bombs, then adding the undercarriage. It's the same as the A1 kit. Moving through, similar construction method. Um, engines, the rear tail wheel is obviously a rear tail wheel, not a ski, and you've got a photo etch uh, wheel door, and then you've got the undercarriage doors here that you obviously wouldn't need on the ski version. Moving through, putting on the rear flap, and then the same final parts going on as it was in the A1 for the A2. We also have the access ladder, but we don't get a figure. Oh no, I do stand corrected, we get the same figure. Um, and I wonder if that's a wheel chock there, possibly at the top. And then the marking 
for the placement of the canopy masks. Right, so in the box it is exactly the same. One thing we don't get is we don't get a colour print like we did in the A1, which is such a shame because, again, it's iconic box art. Um, we get the splinter camo pattern, which is the same as the A1, but the other one that I would be doing for this one is the winter whitewash version, because I think that's stunning. Um, and it is a different aircraft. Uh, so we're talking Russia 1943, and the other one is Russia 1942. So if you want to have a look at that, make sure that's focused for you so you get a decent view. There we go. And then that's that's the two marking options for the A2 version. Um, and then obviously the only difference in the sprue is the engine sprues, where instead of having the skis on the engine sprues, then we have some beautifully molded tires with a flat spot. So you've got the weight on wheels, which is fantastic. And then we've got the undercarriage struts and I have to say, although I'm not taking it out of the plastic, the quality of the moulding is exactly the same as the A1 version. There is no flash here on this kit. The detail is very sharp, crisp and ever-present. So detail-wise, it's going to be a stunning kit to build. Everything else is the same as before. So that is the A1 and the A2. Let's let's get all these parts back in the box and then we'll have a quick discussion of what we think are the pros and cons of this kit. So give me a moment and we'll be back on me. So there we are. Um, an inbox review of the parts going together to make Great Wall Hobbies Fokker Wolf 189A2 and the difference between A2 and A1. Um, so, final thoughts um, molding is terrific, no flash, very little cleanup, a few ejector pins in it could be awkward places, but I think they're going to be reasonably easy, easily to deal with. Construction looks like it could be a little troublesome because of the different parts involved and how they've put it together. However, um, Great Wall Hobby Kits on the whole get good reviews for how they go together uh, for construction and um, ease of construction and strength of construction when they're together. So if their reputation continues with these kits, it shouldn't be a problem as long as you take your time do your test fitting, make sure you're happy how it's going, and then go for it. So anybody with reasonable modeling skills should be able to put this kit together. Um, I did a little search on scale mates, and the first kit, which was the A1, was released in 2010, and then the A2 followed in 2012. So it's an eight-year-old kit. So you can see it's very modern tooling, and the, the quality and the detail shines through as being a, a really nice model, uh, modern tooled kit of this iconic aircraft. It, I mean, Germany produced in the war some very iconic aircraft, very unusual, and this is definitely one of them. And it's been on my bucket list for quite a while, so I was really happy to pick these two kits up. Um, and I am hopefully going to get around to building them next year once I've got my other big projects out of the way. Um, so there we go. Great Wolf Hobbies, Focke Wolf 189, A1 and A2. A brilliant kit worth a go in anyone's book, especially if you can pick them up for a good price off eBay. Even if you're going to buy them new, I think they're only at retail in about 45 to 50 pounds. They're definitely worth that money for the level of detail that you get in them and the result and display model you'll get when you're finished. So if you have any questions, as always, feel free to put them down below. I always take time to read and answer questions um, put in, uh, on my page. If you would like to like and subscribe, please feel free to do that. It always helps to grow the channel. And remember, if you do like and subscribe, hit the notification bell to keep you up to date with my updates. I do get them up, not regular every week, to be honest with you, but I do try and at least put a couple of videos up a month of my current build and a review of a kit out of my stash. 
So anyway, thanks for watching. Till next time, my name's Ian, that's my kitchen table. Happy modeling and take care.